To Kill a Mockingbird is a novel by Harper Lee published in 1960. It was immediately successful, winning the Pulitzer Prize, and has become a classic of modern American literature. The plot and characters are loosely based on Lee's observations of her family, her neighbors and an event that occurred near her hometown of Monroeville, Alabama, in 1936, when she was 10 years old. The story is told by the six-year-old Jean Louise Finch. The novel is renowned for its warmth and humor, despite dealing with the serious issues of rape and racial inequality. Plot Summary The story takes place during three years, 1933-35 of the Great Depression in the fictional tired old town of Macomb, Alabama, the seat of Macomb County. It focuses on six-year-old Jean Louise Finch, nicknamed Scout, who lives with her older brother Jeremy, nicknamed Jem, and their widowed father Atticus, a middle-aged lawyer. Jem and Scout befriend a boy named Dill, who visits Macomb to stay with his aunt each summer. The three children are terrified, yet fascinated by their neighbor, the reclusive Arthur Boo Radley. The adults of Macomb are hesitant to talk about Boo, and few of them have seen him for many years. The children feed one another's imagination with rumors about his appearance and reasons for remaining hidden, and they fantasize about how to get him out of his house. After two summers of friendship with Dill, Scout and Jem find that someone is leaving them small gifts in a tree outside the Radley place. Several times the mysterious Boo makes gestures of affection to the children, but, to their disappointment, he never appears in person. Judge Taylor appoints Atticus to defend Tom Robinson, a black man who has been accused of raping a young white woman, May Ella Yule. Although many of Maycomb's citizens disapprove, Atticus agrees to defend Tom to the best of his ability. Other children taunt Jem and Scout for Atticus's actions, calling him a nigger lover. Scout is tempted to stand up for her father's honor by fighting, even though he has told her not to. One night, Atticus faces a group of men intent on lynching Tom. This crisis is averted in an unexpected manner. Scout, Jem, and Dill show up, and Scout inadvertently breaks the mob mentality by recognizing and talking to a classmate's father, and the would-be lynchers disperse. Atticus does not want Jem and Scout to be present at Tom Robinson's trial. No seat is available on the main floor, but the Reverend Sykes invites Jem, Scout, and Dill to watch from the colored balcony. Atticus establishes that the accusers, May Ella and her father, Bob Ewell, the town drunk, are lying. It also becomes clear that the friendless May Ella made sexual advances toward Tom, and that her father caught her and beat her. Everyone knows that the white trash Ewells are not to be trusted, but the jury convicts Tom anyway. Jem's faith in justice is badly shaken. Atticus is hopeful that he can get the verdict overturned, but Tom is shot and killed while trying to escape from prison. Despite Tom's conviction, Bob Ewell is humiliated by the events of the trial, Atticus explaining that he destroyed, Ewell's, last shred of credibility at that trial. 12. Ewell vows revenge, spitting in Atticus' face, trying to break into the judge's house, and menacing Tom Robinson's widow. Finally. He attacks Jem and Scout while they are walking home on a dark night after the school Halloween pageant. Jem suffers a broken arm in the struggle, but amid the confusion someone comes to the children's rescue. The mysterious man carries Jem home, where Scout realizes that he is Boo Radley. Sheriff Tate arrives and discovers you're dead from a knife wound. Atticus believes that Jem was responsible, but Tate is certain it was Boo. The sheriff decides that, to protect Boo's privacy. He will report that Yule simply fell on his own knife during the attack. Boo asks Scout to walk him home. After she says goodbye to him at his front door, he disappears again, never to be seen again by Scout. While standing on the Radley porch, Scout imagines life from Boo's perspective. Thank you.